Hey everybody, welcome back to On My Screens with TNT. Right now T's not here. She's actually going to go pick up some school clothes. And I got somebody watching the baby right now. I got my, my mom in here. She's watching the baby. And uh, today is August 30th. So for everybody that doesn't know or is unfamiliar with the fact that Chadwick Boseman just passed away two days ago. And I decided that I really needed to make a video slash a recording of just kind of my thoughts on him as an actor and kind of the legacy he leaves behind. Now, the only reason that I'm doing this just straight up is because he played Black, Black Panther. And uh, growing up, Black Panther was always one of those characters that I always just never thought that would be a superhero. After Blade and after they, what they did to Blade after the second movie, the third movie it was just like, oh, we got to bring in we, we're not getting enough black or I guess white audiences. So we have to fill up 90 percent of the cast with black people. I mean, with white people in order to um, placate the masses, I guess, or to become more mainstream, even though it's the third movie out of uh, a trilogy. Let's do this now. Right. So I never thought that I'd ever see another black superhero on screen just because that's just not how things work in our world. And I don't I don't mean to complain or, or talk down to anybody or, or act like. Black people aren't represented aren't represented like they are uh, in the just in the normal population, but the fact is is in my opinion I feel like they aren't. Chadwick Boseman was the first guy to be in there outside of Falcon, who is actually you know he's a side character, much like most of the guys that Marvel still had the rights to. Most of those guys are kind of side characters. They're not the big guys. They're not the Spider Mans. They're not the Incredible Hulks. Though they didn't own the rights to those guys. So it all makes it all makes sense that they kept they kept Black Panther and then they eventually made a Black Panther movie, which was incredible. I think it's still top five. If you guys bear with me for a moment, let me see. Black Panther gross one point three billion dollars, which is just unheard of. Like as soon as first of all, first of all, let me let me run this back. Chadwick Boseman was uh, diagnosed. Apparently he was diagnosed four years ago, I guess in 2016 with stage three colon cancer. Now, throughout that whole time, I never even knew this. I knew that my guy was looking, he was looking real thin on red carpets and stuff, but I figured it was just because he was tired and he only kind of bulked up for the role of Black Panther. But come to find out, he had cancer this entire time. So throughout his entire pretty much rise, he was diagnosed with cancer and was going to die. So I guess the first movie that I heard about him in was uh, 42. So he went to he went to Howard University, which is a HBC, and he gave a commencement speech. I remember that. And he did the movie 42, which is about uh, Jackie Robinson, who is the I mean, he broke the killer barrier. Right. So and that's pretty much all the roles he played up until the point where he became super mainstream with Black Panther. So before that, or not before that, but after that, he was in Get On Up where he played, where he played James Brown. In, 2000, in 2013, he played Jackie Robinson, 42. 2014, he played James Brown in Get On Up. And then pretty much after that, if I remember correctly, he did he did Marshall, which is where he played Thurgood Marshall. Once again, he's just playing nothing but biopics. He's only playing other people. He's playing, he's playing uh, historical figures, really. And he broke into the mainstream with uh, Civil War. So he was in Civil War in 2016. Marshall was 2017, actually. So he did Captain America Civil War and then Marshall and then Black Panther came out and broke all the records, especially for pretty much an all black cast. Uh, it's, it's once again, just strange to see that, you know, if you give us an opportunity to support our own, we probably will. And we do a pretty good job at it. So he did Black Panther. I was a big fan. I never thought that it would be a movie. But once I heard that they had the rights, I was like, well, Let's see what they do with, you know, like Iron Man and all these other guys. They do all these second rate characters and then they did Black Panther and it was just it was it was gangbusters. It was it was through the roof. Just every scene of him like running and just being powerful and being strong and being everything that you would expect the king of Wakanda to be. Right. With that being said, I, I don't even know where I'm going with this video. I just wanted to get my thoughts out and my 
feelings out about the guy because honestly i have not seen any of these other movies he, he did he was in gods of egypt i didn't even know they had black people in that honestly because everything on the cover is all white dudes this is gods of egypt all white dudes and it's like this i'm definitely not going to see that but apparently he's in it and apparently he plays a pretty p- prominent role so i just wanted to say i guess rest in peace to chadwick boseman the next couple videos that or not videos, but the next couple podcasts that come out, I might be reviewing some of these movies, man, because some of these are pretty interesting. I didn't even know that there was a James Brown biopic only because once again, it, it doesn't seem like something that would be in the mainstream, which apparently it wasn't. I'd like to see what the gross was on Get On Up because that was all black people like straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. There's it was look at that. It's got an eighty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I just haven't, haven't seen it. Like my my movie watching is very limited, only because you know I got I'm on a limited income. I might as well keep it as keep it to the things that I actually want to see. And I had no interest in this, and I didn't even know it came out. 2014. That's a long time ago, man. That was six years ago. But I'm gonna give it a shot. See what these movies are all about. See what. He has to say, because like I said, me, my perspective, I guess I could give my perspective as a black person living in America, especially during these times. There has been there's been a lot of talking about how people should kind of let go of of things and or especially black people. It's always black people. We sh- we, we always got to let go of everything that has happened to us. And that continues to happen. Like, we should just get over it. If we stop talking about it, then it won't happen anymore. But the fact is, is it, that's that's just not that's just not accurate. It's not helpful. Nothing is helpful except for having allies on your team that will, that'll make sure that the way that people are treated is not going to happen to you. A lot of people, I think a lot of people lack the diversity in their normal lives to really uh, sympathize with anybody outside of what they are right like my family is pretty damn diverse like uh the only thing we don't have which is kind of strange to me is is white people there's not a lot of white people in my family especially in my close family but i mean my cousin is married to a chinese woman like from china he he moved to shanghai to teach english and now he is married to a chinese woman it's it's that's just the way that my family is my wife uh t she's 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 mexican you know what I mean? Uh, we've got uh, my 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 cousin. He's he's married to a Puerto Rican girl. So it's 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 like we we kind of we whenever I see people being treated badly, I see my family. No matter really the race, because I mean hell, I was I was raised by white people. I was I was raised by them. Like I grew up listening to George Strait and and Clint Black and you know fucking. Uh, Darth Brooks, like I, I listened to that kind of music growing up because that's all that was kind of presented to me, and I never really had a problem code switching into whatever it is that I needed to, whatever situation that I needed to be in, in order to excel in what it is that I do. With that being said, I have a lot of sympathy for pretty much everybody. So whenever I say I don't have any white people in my family, that's a lie. Like I, I was literally, like I still am in contact with people. They were just my babysitters, but I mean, they left a lasting impact on my life and it just made me realize like we're all pretty much equal and we all pretty much are in this together. So we really need to kind of focus on, you know, you can still have your differences. You can still have your difference. I don't want to say that you can't have differences and we're all the exact same. But the fact is, is we need to embrace the fact that we are just a little different, but all the same people. And I feel like that gets lost in a lot of rhetoric, especially by social media and the mainstream media. There's, there's people just have a lot of opinions about things that they know nothing about. They don't know what it's like to be black. They don't know what it's like to be Hispanic. They don't know what it's like to be uh, Middle Eastern. You know what I mean? They don't know what it's like to be other. So they have no idea what it feels like whenever people are saying, you know, get over it or, or don't don't talk about it. We shouldn't talk about this. Otherwise, it'll just perpetuate. And it's like, no, we need to talk about it and then realize that hey, we need we need help. Like we need or we need to help each other. We need to help each other. 
I feel like Black Panther was one of the first movies to really do that. Like outside of outside of the main Avengers, who is a person of color? I mean, it, it gets squirrely. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it definitely does not. You don't you don't think about it because if you're looking at it, you're looking at the defaults. Everything is a default. Like you're, this is a white man. This is another white man. This is a white girl. This is a white guy. Who else is in there? And then it's like, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's let's throw in uh, what's her name? Let's let's throw in Mantis. She's like Asian, right? Right? Okay. Like. Oh, we've got Falcon. What what do we got for him to do? Nothing. Just like just like Storm and the X Men. What do we have for them to do? Nothing, really. Like there's there's just no. And this guy built his entire career basically off of playing historically black characters. Not even characters. They're people. Like he played Ernie Davis in 2008. Did he play Ernie Davis? Holy crap! I'm look I'm looking at his IMDb right now, and. Okay, no, he didn't. He, he it's uh, Rob Brown played him. So I was about to say, man, I'm like, God, dog, man, he played everybody. Next thing you know, he gonna be he gonna be Satchel Paige. But um, who is another person probably needs a movie? Like I I need I don't know, man. There's there's like the way that I hear it is Ernie. I mean, not Ernie Davis, but uh, Satchel Paige is the best pitcher to ever live and never play in the MLB, not proper, after they, you know what I mean, after they, they, after, shit, Jackie Robinson, like, people just, they just constantly talk about him, but now, who's that guy gonna be, Chadwick Boseman is out, rest in peace, there's, there's, there's so much that you could say, and it just seems like comic book movies are the, that's the only one, what does Falcon do, you know what I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything impressive, I'll tell you this, whenever I watched Endgame, I'm all over the place, by the way, and I apologize. But the fact is, is the the a lot of people cried whenever Iron Man snapped his fingers at the end of Endgame, right? I got emotional, but at a certain point, I was like, this is what he had to do, right? He, I, he, he there was only one way he had to, he had to get himself out of there, right? At the same time, the only time that I actually cried, I actually cried during that movie was whenever Falcon got the shield from Cap because Cap didn't have to do what he did. Spoiler alert, if anybody doesn't know, if you haven't seen Endgame, the highest grossing film of all fucking time, he ends up giving the shield to Falcon. And in my opinion, that was the that was the most powerful thing. I'm about to cry. Like that was the most powerful thing because America means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But you're going to give the mantle of America, of America, to a black man. It's like, now I know it happened in the comics and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the, the, the actual comics are pretty niche. I mean, they're not they're not something that just everybody knows about. But the fact is, is. Well, that was kind of frustrating. Uh teachers came home but anyway like i was saying america means a lot to a lot of different people uh it means it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people and the fact is is marvel in i don't know if you want to call it brilliance or what but they made a very controversial decision in my opinion and a very very i don't know very smart decision to kind of pass that on to somebody of color cuz i mean it could have went to bucky you know what i'm saying i mean i mean he's clearly a sleeper cell that could be activated at any moment but they gave it to cap's right hand man and he happens to be a black person it's not because it's not because he is black i mean i'm i mean if you listen to i don't know what you call that community but they're very vocal whenever uh somebody that's not black or somebody that's not white and a male is recast as somebody that's not white and a male. Not saying that everybody needs to, there needs to 100% inclusivity, like you will never get another white male. Like I, like that's the kind of thing that it seems like the narrative that they push is we're being exterminated out of media. And the fact is, it's just like, dude, 
you guys are the default. Like, let's let's give somebody else. I don't want to say give somebody else a chance whenever they don't deserve it. But in this case, as far as with the character of Falcon, he does deserve it. He he hasn't really had much to do, just like Captain America in the comic books. He was never really a force to be reckoned with outside of the Avengers. Everybody knew Captain America from the Avengers. And then he became pretty much the he has the best movies. Let's put it like that. He was put into a spot where he ends up having all of the fucking clout. Everything that was important in the MCU has happened to Captain America. Right. His in, in his films. So with Marvel giving the mantle of Captain America and the shield to a black man, it's just that's just something I, I just I just like even still just talking about it is just one of those things where it's like, damn, man, that was like that's crazy. Like like even you, too, you can be America like you can be the picture of America and the picture of what we stand for a black guy. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know. There's, that was, that's, that was like crazy to me. It's, it's just, it's just crazy. So I'm over here getting emotional about Falcon, but we're talking about Chadwick Boseman. Uh, Chadwick Boseman. He died on August 28th. Today's the 30th. He is the embodiment of black. You know what I mean? I mean, he played Black Panther, man. Like who would have knew that that movie would be like what? What is it? Highest grossing? Let's see. Highest grossing movies of all time. Let's try Wikipedia. Let's see what they got. Right. And this is not adjusted for inflation, but we're just gonna go. We're gonna go with worldwide gross. We're looking at Avengers: Endgame, Black Panther, Avatar, Titanic, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, Avengers: Infinity War. Black Panther's in that. The shit, the finale is in fucking Wakanda. Jurassic World, The Lion King, The Avengers, Furious 7, didn't know that, Frozen 2, uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, and then number 12 is Black Panther. So, out of all the Marvel movies that I just named, Black Panther is the only solo film, an original solo film, it's not a sequel, it's the only film that's in the top, what is that, 15? that is on that list so top 15 the the rest the last three harry potter and the deathly hallows star wars the last jedi and jurassic world fallen kingdom so out of all those movies the only movie that's in there that's not like a team-up movie is black panther that's that's a fucking legacy to leave behind man and my man died at 43 years old unexpectedly around i guess his friends and family his Twitter has blown the fuck up. So that means that everybody felt that. Everybody felt Black Panther dying. You can't get six million likes without every race being like, damn, we lost a good one. And that's that's the main thing to look at. Is that everybody, uh, like Twitter, most social media is bullshit. Like hell, there were, there were people, whenever Chadwick Boseman put out a, a video I'm not sure exactly what he was talking about, but I remember watching a video and I was like, man, my man looks, he looks sick. Like maybe this is for a movie. I have no idea. Maybe, like I said, maybe he always looks like this and he just got big for 42. He got big for Black Panther. He got big for those roles. And then he's back down to what he normally looks like. But at this point, it's like, damn, no, my man was sick that entire time. How strong do you have to be to be sick for four years? Nobody fucking knows. Black Panther came out in 2018. That means he was filming Black Panther with fucking stage three colon cancer. It's the craziest fucking thing. And as far as I know, everybody can say that like they knew, especially the people in the know or the people that that follow movies and such like real close. Those guys can say that they saw this and that there was inklings of of it and or you know he put out a statement but i never saw any of that and if you did i think you're lying honestly because this came so unexpected as far as we know black panther 2 is in the works we we moving on but at this point i don't know what they're gonna do 
that was our hero. Like I don't I don't think people realize how strong. Not even cuz I think that the movie is 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 okay. Like it's it's decent. It's about the same in my opinion. It has the same as far as the just story, the filmmaking, the plot, like all that kind of stuff. The filmmaking is good, but the the plot is about the same as I'd say on the same level as like an Ant-Man or a Doctor Strange or anything like that. But the cultural importance of it and the cultural importance behind it is the thing that I'm talking about. That that's the part where I'm just insanely impressed at the fact that they actually made a Black Panther movie. We're talking about like Black Panther is named after the fucking Black Panthers. Black Lives Matter apparently which is an organization I didn't know this it's an organization that has its own goals and people don't like them people don't like their goals people don't like what they stand for a lot of people once again i feel like a lot of people that have no or have very little sympathy they they don't have that diversity in their life outside of probably their workplace that allows them to feel any sort of empathy for I don't want to say the oppressed, but for people that are looked down upon. So whenever they look at Black Lives Matter, as far as the organization, they have their own political beliefs. But the the phrase and the phrasing of Black Lives Matter does not mean, in my opinion, in, in my interpretation, it does not mean what the actual organization is about, which it always confused me whenever people were like, we're donating to Black Lives Matter. I'm like, who the fuck is this money going to? Who are these people? that are black lives matter. I thought black lives matter was just a a chant. It was a it was a a powerful team of nothing like like anonymous or or uh, occupy. Like I thought that there was no just front. There was just hey, we we're saying black lives matter because of dot dot dot. Not we want to enact social change on a uh communist level. We're marxists, we're this, we're that. Like I didn't know that it was equated to that but now it makes sense but it's one of those things where that's not what i mean whenever i say it or if i uh or if it ever comes out of my mouth it's not it has nothing to do with the organization it has to do with black lives mattering once we fix that problem then we can address the entire problem which is in in black lives matter in my opinion is is more about police brutality uh, government brutality systemic racism those kinds of things where it's like you need to recognize that this happens and has happened it's not it has nothing to do with being a marxist or a communist or or any of the the i don't know the goals of the organization i I don't know what the organization is about because I, i refuse to kind of fall into that trap but i do believe my life matters and to the people that are in my family and the people that are i am close to if something were to happen to me, I feel like they would change their tune to be like, well, damn, yeah, now now they do matter. But that's 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 a whole nother that's a whole nother podcast. So. So, yeah, Chadwick Boseman. I know this is this has been the most rambly video. Let's see how long have I been going Been going quite a while. And I'm going to try to edit this down, bring it down. But I just want to talk about Chadwick Boseman and kind of the power that he's left behind the his. I don't know his legacy. The fact that he the fact that he passed away is just it's just mind blowing. And he did it on his own terms. He did it on top. He did it with nobody. Nobody knew. Nobody fucking knew. He didn't do it for clout. He was. I mean, I I I just watched. I, I saw a picture of him at a Make a Wish, I guess, kids hospital bed, and apparently she had cancer, and so did he. And he's he's there. And that all was based off of his role as Black Panther. Black fucking Panther, man. He was Black Panther. And that's the highest grossing solo Marvel film. What a just just crazy, crazy legacy. Just with that one role. His one role has disrupted everything. Now, you know, white people still got all the money and all that kind of stuff as far as like, you know, oh, well, this wasn't... Marvel Disney is not run by by black people. It's like, yeah, but it was made by black people. It was made with black people. Everything about it was black. And we were given the opportunity by whenever I say we, I mean black people. We was we were we were given an opportunity to 
create that art, bring that art to the big screen and look at what it did. It made you more money. So all the people that talk about SJWs and this is all part of the agenda to for, I don't know, I've heard white genocide, shit like that. It's just like, man, if you only knew what it felt like to always feel like you were something else, you were extra, you were marginal, you were third on the list, fourth on the list, fifth on the list. And then you finally get one and people have problems with it. I don't think anybody, I don't think a lot of people had problems with Black Panther as far as the, um, as far as the, uh, you know, like a, uh, people that were in the center kind of versus the people that are like far right wing or far left wing, like, cause they're both ridiculous, but all the people in the middle, I mean, they all went and saw it. It's, I mean, it, it it's clear in the, it's clear in the, in the, in the money it made. Everybody went to see Black Panther. Everybody went to go see a Marvel movie. Just so happened to have black people in it. So that's just powerful. It's just very powerful. And at the same time, we're looking at a guy that went out on top. I mean, he literally went out on top. Out of all the movies that I'm thinking of, Black Panther 2 was one of the one was the probably the one that I was most excited about, especially with it being a solo movie. Like that's just that's just fucking crazy. I don't know. I think I should wrap it up. Maybe, maybe I'll start watching some Chadwick Boseman movies, man, because I really don't know him outside of Black Panther and 42, which I still haven't I haven't seen 42, but I know that he played Jackie Robinson. I, I really want to watch that James Brown. I wonder if he in there smoking crack. Hell, in the movie, I remember in the video, people were calling him Crack Panther because he looked so sick. You never know what somebody's going through, man. You never fucking know. You really need to. You got to chill on the jokes because you just you just never know. Cause you lose somebody, you lose somebody like that. It's like, fuck man, that shit, that shit hit different. That shit hit fucking different. But yeah, man, this is just a little short episode. T's not here. Like I said, well, she's here now, but she's, maybe we'll do another, maybe we'll do another one. Maybe she can give her opinion on how she felt about it. But I know for me, I never thought I'd ever see nothing like that on the screen as far as, you know, just the character himself. But it happened and it happened with a guy that clearly everybody loved. I mean, he's number one on Twitter, man, like number one on Twitter, 6.5 million likes on a tweet. That shit's crazy. The only other people that have millions of likes on their tweets is like Obama, Wendy's for their chicken nuggets. But Obama, like that's that's the level of human being that you have to be as far. I mean, I don't want to say human being, but you have to have that, that kind of influence. That kind of influence is the only way that you get from both sides. That kind of influence is the kind of influence that needs to be, I guess, lauded at this point. Like it's just, it's, it's, it's just fucking crazy how everybody came together and was like, this is fucked. Like this is fucked up, but don't feel sorry for that man. Like I said, he went out his own way. He went out on top only his friends around him, you know what I'm saying? His family, no, no fucking fake love, no fucking bullshit behind any of the shit that he went through by himself. Everything was on his own terms. So don't feel too bad. Like my man is, he's doing, he did exactly what he wanted to do, which is powerful. I'm gonna drop a, I'm gonna drop my condolences for Chadwick Boseman. And at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I have Giving him the respect that he's due, giving everybody that the, the respect that they're due. And I just want to say rest in peace, man. Like you, much like Obama, you've empowered a lot of black kids to realize that that they can be that they can be heroes too. You know what I mean? Obama did it, you know, politically. And hey, you can have the you can hold the highest position of power in this nation and black panther said you can be a fucking hero like i don't know man that shit that shit hit different man like for real so rest in peace chad bozeman uh and to anybody listening to this you know shit i don't know <laughs> wakanda forever man wakanda forever salute moment of silence for chadwick bozeman
All right, y'all. I guess this is it for this episode of On My Screens with TNT. This time it's just T-Dog. All right, y'all. Peace.